after the blue carded Saga toys, we got gold carded Saga toys. Well, they were blue, but with a gold stripe. But I have to say, this era of Star Wars collecting, which came after Attack of the Clones and before Revenge of the Sith, gave us some of the best Star Wars figures. This was, to me, one of the absolute apexes of modern Star Wars collecting, was kind of this era between Episode 2 and 3. Now, of course, we still did get a lot of Attack of the Clones figures in the Gold Saga, much like in the Blue Saga, but we got our classic trilogy figures, too, and that starts off with a Snow Trooper refresh. Well, actually, it's an entirely new figure altogether. Like other figures around this time had an action feature, in this case a blasting uh, web cannon, which is interesting because this cannon was first released with a Snow Trooper as a deluxe figure. So it kind of makes you wonder about price value. I've always thought about this one. Yeah, you got the little box with the tube that didn't come with the new version, but the new version has better articulation and comes with a handgun blaster thing. So now it's interesting, this is actually not the trooper that mans the gun in Empire Strikes Back. This particular trooper is the one that's standing next to General Veers in the at at or AT-AT. You can see from the insignia of rank that he has there. This figure would eventually be made as a standalone figure in the short-lived 3 and 3 4 Black series, but it was a cool compliment to the previous Snow Trooper, and hey, you know, whether you wanted to have him blasting with the cannon or just standing behind General Veers, it was a unique Snow Trooper. There's not that many unique ones. I mean, they have re-released it several times in different packaging, and again, the price value always made me uh, kind of do a double-take, saying, wow, this was a deluxe figure. I mean, granted, it had that little, you know, the, like the box and the tube that got cut, but other than that, you still got the giant gun. So, hey, it was cool, and Snow Troopers being as popular as they are, we keep getting this figure re-released over and again for the next couple years until we got kind of a definitive sculpt done in the Vintage series. Well, actually, slightly before the Vintage series. But, yes, Snow Troopers, if you wanted a, a good deal, this Saga Gold was it. Nice, basic figure. The next original trilogy figure was our second ever Vader with a removable helmet. Now, we'd had Vader from Return of the Jedi before, and we'd gotten, you know, ones from the Final Throne Room duel. The version with the removable helmet was kind of a generic Vader with removable helmet. It wasn't capturing one moment in the film, whereas this one was. Uh, what they were doing in the Blue Saga and the Gold Saga with the action features, which I'm kind of glad they've walked away from, this was supposed to replicate when Vader throws his lightsaber at Luke and smashes the catwalk on the Death Star 2 battle. So while it is that exact moment in time with the action feature the way it is, he kind of winds up looking, I don't know, awkward isn't even the right term for it. I guess to take a note from the other Star movie. And I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. So, yeah, as cool as this figure was giving us a second-ever helmetless Vader, he's kind of stuck forever in that pose. But, you know, if you want a figure that replicates an exact moment, that's what you're going to get. Eventually, we would get a fully posable Darth Vader with removable helmet in the Vintage series. But, again, you know, for uh, wanting that exact moment, previous figure works. All right, so back to that scene, that throne room duel, Luke has been an issue. We've gotten Jedi Lukes before, but all of the Jedi Lukes so far in the modern line, more or less, have been Jabba's palace, when the outfit's actually different. He has more of a sort of a karate gi versus the uh, tunic that he's wearing, or kind of the, the one-piece spandex-y suit. So yeah, this is his, uh, his, his gi, if you will, that he's wearing in Jabba's palace, and he has more of a spandex-y, like, tight-forming undersuit, which then has a flap that opens up for yet another look. And then, of course, there's the Endor look, too, which is the, uh, the same as Death Star 2, only with a cloak and hat. All right, so this Luke is replicating another exact moment in Return of the Jedi. Now, we did not get a Jedi Luke with flap open or closed for the longest time. This was actually the very first single-carded figure of this version of Luke. So, yeah, even though he was in an exact moment, one where he's smashing his lightsaber down on Vader right after he cuts off Vader's uh, hand, if you'll remember, right before he cuts off Vader's hand, and he slices through the, the base he comes with, which is the Death Star kind of uh, little walkway there. That's his action feature. The little lever on the back makes him swing the lightsaber from a uh, overhead position. But much like Vader, when the action feature isn't being used, this figure looks, okay, it looks terrible. I mean, not only the arms, but the face. 
It also had an interesting variant. Most people who watch Star Wars knows Luke gets his hand replaced by a mechanical hand and wears a glove, and in the first release, the glove was on the wrong hand, so they had to fix it. So there's a running change, if you're into all variants. But yeah, that face, I mean, I know he's supposed to be angry, smashing into his father, but it's up there with some of the ugliest Star Wars sculpts of all time. So, love him or hate him, action features or not, at least we finally got a Death Star 2 Luke. I can't believe this was the first one that was single-carded. It would be years before we got another single-carded Death Star 2 Luke. Thank you.